Then we'll get into the other breaking news today. The Pacers, Dave, hiring Nate Bjork, Bjorkgren, uh, assistant coach from the Toronto Raptors. Dave, this was one that when I saw it, and then when I saw the reactions in our Discord, join that link down below or exclamation Discord into Twitch chat. Yep. It kind of caught everyone by surprise because this was a name that nobody had on their coaching radar. It was all about like, oh, Craig from Miami or Wes from uh, Denver or Philly's assistant coach. No one thought that Bjork Bjorkgren from uh, the Raptors was on the board because everyone thought, oh, if the Raptors are getting someone poached from him, it's Adrian Griffin. Yeah, no, I agree. This this was a, a bit out of left field, and it just shows how out of touch I think a lot of the a lot of the rumor mill stuff can be at mm-hmm. times. We're not all NBA insiders here. No Woj's around uh, mm-hmm. dropping his name, so a bit shocking. But uh, I listened to the first five minutes of his story. Yeah, the guy fucking loves basketball. Like that's that's what's most clear to me off of that. You know, he's he's talking about you know growing up a four sport athlete, mm-hmm. uh, but really he started off loving baseball really grew to love basketball was lucky to be on great teams. And then as he switched colleges, actually he met um, Nick nurse. Mm. Uh, Nick nurse was an assistant coach uh, when he was going playing basketball in college. So kind of cool how they first met. Um, but yeah, I, I have no problem with it. I'm still just trying to figure out like, okay, what am I, what's his bring to the table? You know, mm-hmm. what's that quantity that he's going to bring to this Pacers team? Because when you look at that roster, you go, DeMontis Sabonis is the staple. What else are you going, like, what's the game plan here? Mm-hmm. I really like Malcolm Brogdon. They got him to a good deal. Like, okay, so we've got two pieces down. Vic demanding trades, supposedly. Miles Turner never seeming quite like he's going to develop any further. So is he on the hot seat to be traded? You got the fucking microwave out there and TJ Warren who can score you about 45 buckets in no time, but Mm -hmm. is is he good outside the bubble? Who knows? So like, they've got a lot of decisions to make over there and I don't really know the identity yet. It's one of those situations where I still got to do a lot of research on this guy before I can really have a great Mm -hmm. take. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. I didn't have that ready because I didn't know. Well, I mean, for me, it was almost, it's the same thing. Cause like I was thinking about this earlier today after the news broke of, okay, the question that like, I know we're going to hit in this segment. I was like, was this a, we're basically going to like ask the question of, was it a good move, bad move? Like, and I'm sitting there going now, I want to, I want to have the hot take like answer, you know, like when a coaching hire, like when Ty Lue got hired, have that basically right away. This ain't going to work. This was the wrong move. Da, 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 da. Or like, this is going to work. This is the best move. Da, 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 da. I can't do that. Like, I, I feel like this is a wait and see kind of a hire because okay. there's so much unknown. Like yet again, how is it like the other thing that comes into my head is how does this affect the Victor Oladipo stuff? Because this is a coach that yes, it was uh Devin Booker's kind of first two years in the league, but he has experience with a Devin Booker when he was an assistant with the Phoenix suns. From 2015 to 2017. Like I said though. That was a young Devin Booker. It's not the Devin Booker. That we see right now. Um, So like. Is this a move where it's like. Is Vic still on the block? Are they still looking to trade Victor Oladipo? Is Sabonis the main guy? And that's who they're going to go with. um, If they obviously trade Vic. It's just this team. I kind of almost look at it as like. Is this a move they make? to go ahead and say, this is a guy that's going to help us in playoff runs. Or is this a guy they bring in to say, Hey, we're hitting the retool because this isn't a team. Like we talked about the bulls yesterday. The Pacers aren't a team that has to dive into a rebuild. If anything, they have to dive into a retool to get themselves to the level they need to be. Because let's be honest, they don't have it. I love Vic, but they don't have a Giannis. They don't have a Jimmy Butler. They don't have a Jason Tatum. They don't have that guy right now to, for me, compete with those teams that are at the top of the East. He could, but do we see that? Like, do we We see that next level jump? Like, is that what this is? If you didn't know, DeMontis Mose didn't play in bubble. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that memory of him as of late. Again, it's Mm -hmm. that short-term memory that kind of kills us. But like, Uh, is this a coaching hire that is 
supposed to help him make that jump to where it's like, okay, we are thinking of him in the JT Butler Giannis kind of like he's the main guy for the Pacers and he's the guy it. that makes them compete. Would absolutely love it if that happened. Um, I'm reading through uh, the Pacers subreddit trying to get mm-hmm. some takes on yeah. you know, what they're killing. Uh, their answer was, you know, one Nate for another. <laughs> that's, uh, what I, that's what I said ball, before the show. Name Nate is our jam. Uh-huh. Um, there's some feedback from some Raptors fans. Mm-hmm. Lots of positivity about this guy. Best kept secret in basketball is Raptors yeah. assistant staff. Um, always the first assistant coach to give nurse advice during games. Mm-hmm. Lots of X's and O's. Paid his dues in the G League. I did I did see that. Yeah. He spent a long time coaching in the G League. Um, I think he knows a lot about player development. So did Nick Nurse, though, too. Like that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a good thing for these guys. Um, Adrian Griffin was cool, but Nate was clearly second in line. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's interesting because in the outside, again, all we had heard was about mm-hmm. Adrian Griffin. So, again, best kept secret basketball could be. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it seems like he has been very happily taken in by this Pacers uh, community. So, mm-hmm. High hopes for him. Um, I don't think the expectation is for him to, again, make this team a championship contender in the next year, mm-hmm. year or two. But I think they've got a lot of interesting pieces that are like good, could be could be better, could be worse. Like yeah. you got to kind of sift through like the roster mm-hmm. and figure out who are your core guys moving forward with your new identity. Mm-hmm. See them taking in something that the Raptors do offensively or defensively. I'd love to know, you know, what he's going to bring over stylistically. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, we shall and, see defensive and, focused or not. And Kevin Pritchard, the uh, president of basketball operations for the Pacers, um, from the ES- ESPN article, he said, we're very pleased and excited to have uh, Nate as our new coach. Um, this was an extensive and thorough search, and when we reached the conclusion, we felt strongly Nate is the right coach for us at the right time. He comes from a winning background, has experienced a championship success and an innovative and his communication skills along with his positivity are tremendous. We all look forward to a long successful partnership and helping the Pacers move forward. And like, for me, it's like, of course they're, they're banking on him being the, Hey, you come from the Nick nurse system. Maybe this is a new coaching tree that comes out the Nick nurse uh, coaching tree where it's like, okay, you've been to the finals. You've been to the play. Like this is a playoff team. Let's be honest. The Pacers are a playoff team. They need a coach that is going to help them in the playoffs. So like immediately you look at it and you go, well, out of all the assistants that were out there, Denver's assistant could like the whole playoff thing. He's been to the playoffs so they could help. Um, you've got the Philly assistant, same thing. He's got playoff assistant uh, experience, so he can help. Maybe Craig. From, well, Craig's the one from Miami, right? Yeah, Dan Craig. Yeah, he was from my, Miami, and then you had Ham was the one from uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. Both of those yeah. guys, playoff experience. The thing that I – and yet again, this is me trying to get into the mind of like Kevin Pritchard is I feel like the thing that is setting him apart from what I see here is – the championship experience because this is an organization that maybe under Nate McMillan, they thought that it was like, okay, Nate's a, Nate's a good coach, but the, what's the word I'm I'm looking for? The environment or like the attitude of this team could be better. So basically maybe this is a, Hey, we know this is a good team. We've got to retool some stuff. But what he's going to do is he's going to come in with the expectations that Nick Nurse had coming Mm -hmm. in from basically turning a already good Raptors team. Because you look at the Raptors and basically before they won the title, yes, having Kawhi Leonard helps. But before they won the title, it was all negativity from the Raptors. The baby Raptors, LeBron's Raptors, LeBron owns the Raptors, the meteor hit, LeBron toe. Um, to where it's like, yeah, Dwayne Casey was good, but Hey, we need some fresh blood. And Nick nurse came in here and basically changed culture. That's what I was looking for. Change the culture to where, yeah. Is, is that where Bjorkgen, is that what he, or Bjork Gren, is that what he's supposed to do here in Indy offense championship experience, change the culture into a positive one for the Pacers 
that have been like run into the brick wall, brick wall, brick wall, which is the middle yeah. of the East. I I think everything you there, everything you said there sounds spot on to everything I've been reading. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for it. Um, I'm still shocked. There's a lot of head coaches. Uh, a lot of names we're looking for to be hired, not hired yet. Yep. But uh, time will tell. We still got a couple openings. What the Pelicans and the Thunder are the only two, right? Fun, uh, Rockets haven't officially hired the a Rocket. Coach. Well. You're right. They, so we have the right. Rockets, Pelicans, and uh, Thunder. Yes. Right? Because the Clippers hired. Yep. The 76ers hired. <laughs> yeah, they did. Nobody else. Well, the Kings should be open, but they're not. It's not. Um, the Bulls are filled. The Nets are filled. Yeah. So um, shit. Yeah. God, I forgot Steve Nash got hired by the Nets. I even forgot that was an opening with how quickly yep. that one just got kind of uh, gobbled up. But. 